Prior to joining the Border Patrol, I was in the Army. I served four years in 3rd Ranger Battalion, and when I was in 3rd Ranger Battalion, I did five combat deployments. I did uh, three to Afghanistan and two to Iraq. I knew after my fifth deployment that I needed to be done deploying at least for a little while, so I asked to leave Ranger Battalion, and they granted it. I got here to the Border Patrol, and I was offered a job back in the military at the Pentagon. And I said, sure, why not? I can't pass up an opportunity like that. So I went and I worked at the Pentagon for two and a half years. And now I've been back from the Pentagon for about seven years. I never lost a Ranger underneath me during not one of my deployments. So that's something that I'm very proud of. My squad is the squad that found the last remaining SEAL in the mountains. That was the toughest four days of my life. We were in the United States when the Chinook went down. and We weren't supposed to deploy for about another 10 days. And when I got to work, my platoon sergeant said, hey, call your wife, we're, we're leaving now. 48 hours later, I'm 10,000 feet on a mountainside and there's somebody that is out here. He was presumed to be dead, but we didn't know. And uh, I had a job to do. And I remember praying that God would help us to find him to give the family closure. I'm a transplant from Wisconsin. I only had my wife here who I, uh, who I leaned on quite heavily. My wife and I have been married for 14 years. We got married in between my third and my fourth deployment. My wife, thank God, she is a good woman. I could not have done what I've done without her. I wouldn't be where I am. Um, she's been a great source of my strength. And if she wasn't here and she wasn't as strong as she is, I don't think I'd be where I am. I think it's very important to serve. To serve something that's greater than yourself, to put yourself out there, to uh, develop the relationships that you develop sitting in a foxhole with somebody knowing that it's just you and that other person. When I started this program I didn't do it for any uh, praise or any thanks or anything like that. Um, I did it because I knew how much I was hurting and I knew that there were other people out there that were hurting and uh, I just wanted to help but I would be lying to you if I told you it didn't feel nice to be recognized for for giving that help. A lot of people do want to help veterans. I always tell them the same two things. Number one, if you see a need and you feel called to help, fill the need. Sacrifice for the person with your time, your treasures, or your talent, just like that, that individual did for you. And the second one is if you feel uh, like you want to help somebody, then just be someone that they can talk to. If you're going to talk to a veteran, be sincere, be open, just listen and don't try and fix anything that they tell you. Them just talking to you is going to be therapy enough. I just want to tell other veterans that you're not alone. And I would just encourage every veteran to remember who they were when they signed on the dotted line and said I was going to go fight for this country. 